Oh, awesome. Oh, he's oh. a big fish, Josh. Yes. <laughs> 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 Holy shit, Darcy! That's so good. That's a monster. That's a horse. That's two and two cars. Yeah. What a beauty. He's a monster. That's why you can't pretend to move. Yeah! G'day, guys. Welcome back to a new episode. Today, we're going to have a look at Tinaru. Tim spent five or six years up at Tinaru, roaming around in his kayak with his sounder on, and he's put together some screenshots that he's going to share with us. Tim? Yeah, so what I'm going to show you here is my interpretation of some of the screenshots that I've done in Tinaru Dam as to what I believe the fish are doing and what I'm looking for when I'm always chasing the barrows. So let's just dive straight into it. Okay, guys, so what we've got here is a big old fig tree in um, about 70 metres of water. Uh, let's have a look at it, eh? So as you can see here, we've got a fig tree in 17 meters of water. And what you can clearly see from it is, it is on down scan image. And you can clearly see one really good barrow just sitting there by himself. Uh, in that as well is we've got a couple of bait schools. You've got very faint images of what I would have called bony brim schools. And another one over here, which is a lot thicker. One single barrow swimming around and a few um, uh, sooties. And the sooties are generally the round dots. And I, I've noticed this over the years that uh, they show up more like a 50 cent piece, but the barrows are always good because of the way they have broad shoulders. And because of that, they really show up well. And I'll uh, be able to explain that a little bit later on some other screenshots. Okay, so what we have here is a continuation of where I was before, but I just went a little bit further and found another tree in a gully which again has uh, different bait schools and different shots of barrows. So as you can see, this bait school was the other bait school from before. And it's just as I paddle along a bit further, you can clearly see the gully, another tree. But this time we have a bait school, one single barrow on the outside. Even though it's a bit hard to see, there are barrows in the bottom of the tree. But this is a classic one. These are three big barrows that have gone across over top of a bait school and the bait school has scattered and it's actually going down. So they're the type of images I'm looking for because that clearly tells me these fish are hunting. Um, and you'll also see back with this barrow, as you can see the barrow is shaped, it's slightly leaning upwards and that leaning upwards means that it's actually looking for food to feed and that's what I wanna see. Okay, so on this screenshot we've got here, there is actually a lot in this photo. And the big one with it is, is the fact that barrows do feed on tilapia. And as you can see on this screenshot, there is a lot of tilapia. But personally, I don't believe they want to feed on them. They would rather feed on bony brim, mouth almighty's, uh, mud cod. But the tilapia are in the dam, and if they can't find what they want, then they will eat them. But this is a classic example where they're not. So as you can see, there are four barrows. One, two, three, four main barrows. And each one of these barrows are in a feeding mood. And they've all arched upwards, ready to strike the nearest bony brim or mouth and body that comes by their way. And if they can't find one, yes, they will need a tilapia, but they don't want to. Every one of these little dots is a tilapia, and there are thousands of them. And later on, I can show you, even down here, you can see how thick it is. The whole barren at this time was full of them. But these barrows are not trying to feed on them. What they're waiting for, they're in a pattern where they're actually waiting for bony brim, uh, mouth and mighties to come along, and that's what they will feed on. And as they swim along, they will spread through all the um, tilapia, but if they can see a bony brim there, or a mouth and mighty, I'll guarantee they will eat that. And that's why when you're trolling along with lure and stuff like that, you are trying to match that type of bait fish rather than tilapia. Because in this whole shot, as I was going along, I managed to get two of these three fish that are over here. And they were over, all, each one of these fish were over a metre long. But these three barrels that you can see in this are actually what I would say have either had their feed or they're just not ready to be in a feeding mood at the moment. Um, because as you can clearly see, they're swimming along square, they're not in that arch mode, which is what I'm looking for when I'm trying to chase the fish. Yeah, this is another one of these barrels that I keep talking about being arched up, ready to feed. 
It's a big barrel. He's bulked up in his shoulders. That's why they're so good on on um, side scan and, and screen shot. And as you can see, the bulk in his head, he's got his tail down. He's looking up, ready to eat whatever he wants to eat. But again, I will guarantee that he does not want to eat the tilapia if he can find something better. And then when you can see big dots like this, now this is strange, but those dots are actually uh, sooty grunter. I don't know why, I think it's because of how big and fat they are, that they, um, they always seem to turn up like a big 50 cent piece on my sounder. It's, uh, I've studied it, I've caught them like that before, and they are, they're just lovely little 50 cent pieces. Even in the middle of a tilapia school, they'll stick out. Okay, so what we have here is a large barra out to the side of me, and he's roughly about 12 meters or so out to my right hand side. But the big thing here is, and that's him there, you can see the white grain, but the white grain only indicates of where he is. The shadow tells me what he's doing, and as you can clearly see, he's swimming slightly um, the opposite way to where I'm going. But that fish there, for me to catch that fish, I physically have to paddle over to that fish because that fish will not come over to me. I have to go to him. Now, I have studied this for a long time, and most fish, now this is in my kayak, when they're roughly six meters away from me, any further than that, 90% of those fish, I have to paddle over to them. They will not come to me. Okay, so what we have here is a bait school of tilapia that a big barra has come along. And to the contrary is what we think sometimes is, normally you would think a ball or bait, then when a fish would go to it, would turn around and scatter. In this case, it's the other way around. The, the bait fish was actually scattered originally, but as the barrows come to it, they've actually gone into a ball or bait to for protection. And you can clearly see, because this is history. This is when I first saw the bait fish. And as you can see, as I've gone along, it's scattered, but then as the barrow's coming towards it, it actually goes into a ball of bait. So what we have here is totally opposite to the other bait school. This is a bait school of bony brim, where a barrow has actually gone in to feed on it. And as you can clearly see, there's the bait school. You can see there's a drop in the bait. And then when you look down here, you can actually see the barrow sitting in the bait school to feed. So bony brim, on the other hand, do differently to tilapia. They gather in big balls of bait, because of that's how they get their protection, where tilapia turn around and will scatter and ball up on a different way, but they're a lot grainier in when you see the bait ball. Is, there's um, uh, a lot more sooties in the dam than what we think. Uh, and here's a classic example is, those distinct round dots, they're your sooties. And then as you can see down here, you've got barrows down in between the rocks and bait school, which is tilapia, uh, very large tilapia, but as you can see, them swimming around. And then when you come down to the side scanning, so the other thing also is, how do you know when something is directly underneath you? It's very simple. If you have it, that rock there, if you have it on your down scan, your side scan on the right hand side, and on the left hand side, that means you went directly over top of it. But also in this photo, is not only are there some good boulders and bait school, but there's one very large barrow just there. You can, so again, you can see the, the white grain of rice, as we call it, and the shadow, and he's just sitting off the bottom. But that is a very large barrow. What we have here is a screenshot of uh, showing the thermocline line in the dam uh, regarding two barrows. One's on the top side of it, and one is on the bottom side of it. So as you can see, there's one barrow there, clearly on the top side. That's the thermocline line as it goes through there. And the second one is the other barrow that's underneath it. Now that barrow there, if it was feeding, there is no way in hell it's going to come up through that. It will wait till it's ready and it will take a long time. You won't get that fish to come through that during the night. Where this barrow here, he's got more of a chance that he will feed in that zone, but he will not go down there unless he's decided that he's going to go to sleep and have a rest. So in this screenshot, I just wanted to show you how much bait there is in that dam at times. And again, this is what I was saying before. Every one of these grains is a, a tilapia. Just to go show you how thick it can get. Now that is five meters solid thick of tilapia. And I went along for nearly 50 meters in the dam on that night. And it was just like that all the way. There was not one gap of it at all. And as you can see through all that, 
there's not one barra either. So as I was saying before as about how barras don't really like tilapia, because as you can see from the screenshot, if they really like tilapia to eat, they would be absolutely enormous. We wouldn't be able to catch half these barras. What we have here is a, another example of um, how to tell whether the fish are directly under the boat or under your transducer. And as you can see, we've clearly gone over two nice barra swimming along. So one, two, and because you've got exactly the same image on the other side, that means that they were directly under your trend user. So now they would technically be about a meter to two meters behind me, but directly where my trend user was. So what I'm gonna show you now is a series of screenshots over a period of about 20 minutes where I know the fish were going to come up out of the deep water into a certain snag area and this is what they look like as they did it over a period of time. So to start off you can clearly see there's only a couple little barrels hanging around but not a lot at all and that was the main snag. It just comes up onto a nice little sand plateau and then from there three minutes later you can see the barrel starting to rise up Another six minutes, they're still grouping up again, now slowly coming up towards the, um, the top. And now they're starting to build up in a big thick pattern. And all these fish, I had an absolute ball this morning um, catching these fish. I think I, in the end I caught about 12 fish all up, uh, anywhere from 80 to 1100. And it was just one of those mornings where you just know it's going to happen and they were there and I just enjoyed it. That's what makes me go up to the dam all the time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial from Tim. Yeah, well, it's what I used to interpret in my kayak. So, I mean, it's just, uh, I hope it helps you out a bit. So mate, you spent years studying this stuff and this, this stuff has been tried and tested. Like Tim, Tim spent so much time up there and he uh, really knows what he's <laughs> Really knows what he's talking about. I was just lucky, that's all. But electronics do help you a lot. So hopefully with the new electronics that I've got today, I will have a lot better images than that for you somewhere down the track. So we'll probably have a part two to this at some stage in the future. But anyway, it's Tinaroo time this time of year. It's our wet season. It presents a lot of different challenges. The fish hold in different places, don't they, Tim? Yes, they do. And this year is a little bit harder than last most other years because the dam's a lot fuller than what it normally would be so the fish are totally different feeding patterns and different places than what they should be so guys i hope you've enjoyed it remember if you want to get your hands on one of these hats i'll leave a an email address in the comments below so get on board and grab one and uh, we'll see you next time see you